So we're ranking the LGBT Sims within The Sims 4 that were made by EA. So these are the ones that are included with the games, not my custom ones. I went over a whole video talking about who they are, so you can click that link. I'm going to start with our buddy Brant Hecking. Honestly, he gives such strong bear vibes, it's very sad that we don't have any body hair in this game in order to get him to that level. Um, but I'll put him at the mm-hmm, yeah level. I really do like him. I like that he's an art lover. He loves the outdoors. He's good. He's also a personal trainer. I love that for him. He just seems like a little bit of a himbo. So you can't have Brant without Brent as well. So this is his husband. Honestly, I'm not as big of a fan of Brent, and I don't mean to be a hater. He's just kind of boring. He's also, like, absurdly muscular, I would say, given the fact that he's supposed to be, like, a painter, a dog lover, romantic, and a goofball. So I'm less into him as I am into Brant. But as a couple, I probably would have ranked them higher up, but I think Brant is really carrying the weight here. Next, I'm going to go to Caleb. Okay, and I know that Caleb is like a fan favorite. The fact of the matter is, I don't have the vampire pack. So I'm going to put him at who. I did my research for this video. Honestly, like I can see why people are like into him. He seems pretty decent. He seems to be like the good vampire in the pack. My thing is, when I watched Twilight, I was much more Team Jacob. I just really preferred him, and I feel like this dude is like a replacement to everyone who was a Team Edward back in the day, if I can be as bold to say that, while not having the pack. <laughs> Next up, I'll do Leah Hauta. I already talked about this in my other video. This sim is considered the first trans sim, but I have a lot of skepticism. Honestly, it was kind of exciting in terms of like seeing The Sims and Solani anyway, because it's like a nod to a different culture that's nice to be seeing included in the game. But when I actually play as Leah, I find it quite boring. And I think that's just like maybe the type of sim that I'm not interested in. Um, this sim is a bookworm, gloomy, and a perfectionist. and has the renaissance sim aspiration. So they're supposed to be kind of all over the place, learning different things. And I just like, I don't know, I couldn't be bothered to play much longer in the household once I loaded in and I was really trying to be supportive of what is deemed our first trans sim. Next up I'll do Morgan Ember who is also credited as one of the trans sims widely renowned as a non-binary sim in the community. I'll put Morgan at actually I'll put it about at goddess among us. I really liked Morgan from the first time I saw them. They're not like a family within the the world. They're included in Realm of Magic, but they're actually like one of the mentors, I guess, when you go into... I don't know what the words of any of the things are. But when you go into the world, they're a mentor. They're there. They caught my attention even before I knew of any of the gender customization. And overall, The Sims like pretty nice. Has some good traits of being outgoing, a bookworm, ambitious. Um, and then, of course, is this whole spellcaster backstory. I would say all of the mentors in the Realm of Magic pack are actually pretty like lore heavy when it comes to The Sims 4, if you could be, because I feel like I look at them and I kind of know who they are, and then you learn about like what type of magic they like, and you learn even more. So yeah, pretty into them. Now for Oleana, I'm honestly, I'll put her at sure. Like, I kind of like that she's this, like, bodybuilder kind of person, and she's active. Um, she's also a slob and jealous. I honestly find jealous sims so annoying. They're so high maintenance. I can't handle it. I had ended up making one of my sims in my Let's Play jealous. It's the doctor's wife, if you're watching that one. And... I can't. Like, I can't play for very long. It bothers me. The things that bother her bother me when it's just like they can't even not be in the same room. I guess that's good. It's like good to have some difficulty, but I'm just like not about it. Otherwise, I think Oleana's pretty cute. Like I like the, her family dynamic and stuff like that, but just not into playing as her. So of course now I'll do her wife Layla. Layla I like a little bit more. I'll put her at mm-hmm, yeah. Honestly, I think this was the first lesbian couple um she's a clumsy sim creative loves the outdoor and she wants to be a painter so i'm into all of those things playing with her can be pretty fun except for the fact that she has to be standing next to her wife at all times otherwise her wife is stressed out now we have tina tinker i honestly uh hmm i'll put her at mm -hmm, yeah i like her aesthetic 
I actually do like playing as her because she kind of like is a well her and her wife are both like a really good intro into the freelancer career I didn't really understand it before playing as them so that's good I don't really like that they're randomly like loaded like their house is like a mansion and I don't understand how um, but otherwise I do like the storyline of her like being kind of a little bit of a workaholic and a little bit of like a, a perfectionist and things like that um I kind of relate, and I like that, you know, like, she's gloomy as well. There's, like, some layers to her. And moving on to her wife, Yasmin. So Yasmin is also a freelancer. They She does writing, and I think Tina does... Is there a crafter one? If there is, that's the one that she does. So Yasmin is clumsy, a bookworm, creative, and a muser. Honestly, I'm going to put her at sure. I do like her by herself, but the thing is, as a couple... I don't see a whole lot of distinction between them, and I know that the whole setup is supposed to be that Tina's the workaholic, but they also both work as freelancers and working from home, so I wish there was a little bit of a difference between the two of them, um, just so that I could rate them separately here. If I was rating them as a couple, I'd probably put them both up here, but it's kind of similar to the Hecking family, where like I feel like Tina kind of carries the weight, whereas I don't know a whole lot about Yasmin. Now we have Mary Greenberg. Okay, so Mary Greenberg is an elder lesbian, first and foremost, has purple hair, is family-oriented, a green fiend, loves the outdoors. Uh, how can I not put her at Goddess Among Us? I think you, if you watch that other video that I have, you know that I am obsessed. Like, I'm obsessed with her and her wife. I'm just going to put her up there already. Just like both of these two, having an elder queer couple in a game for representation is just amazing. I Like, I'm obsessed. Um, Blossom, on the other hand, I like her because she's actually like a very good intro introduction to, well, they both are. They're both a very good introduction into like what the eco lifestyle um, pack has to offer. I would say Blossom more so because she's a recycle disciple oh my god recycle disciple i hate saying that she's creative and she's a maker so she's like into this whole fabrication thing that came with the game and then even just their house alone was like super cool i was very confused i didn't understand where the second bedroom was when i loaded in but i was like enthralled by actually looking around her lot i would say the same thing for leah's house as well like i like that those two builds are like very distinct to the world that was given with us and like architecturally something i would never come up with but yeah very well done on that sense and lastly we have darling walsh and as i know the darling walsh is not confirmed i'm still putting her on here as an lgbt sim i'm putting our, her at mm -hmm, yeah i feel like honestly there's a lot going on with darling first and foremost she's a teen second of all i know that a lot of people think that she's non-binary for this from my perspective she's a butch lesbian she also has the fact that she's active so that's why she kind of has this sporty like men's attire and then she's also unflirty so for me she's giving some like aromantic asexual potentially vibes depending on how you want to play this out um, but also like super butch and i like seeing that in a sim i think this was the first sim that they really introduced the fact that you could wear um, clothing for any gender on any sim frame which was really great to see i believe this is before the gender customization options but while they were still saying that fashion has no gender within the sims which was amazing to see so from that standpoint i really like her she's also dastardly i think that's kind of fun who doesn't love an evil gay and i'm also a big fan of the roommates that they gave her the only reason why i don't give darling a goddess among us status is really because it's a bit ambiguous of if this is an lgbt sim i like i feel like it's too much a yes to be included in a headcanon video but i would say that she has to be like canon because I don't think that the sim scene made this sim being like, this is a regular cisgender heterosexual woman. Here we go. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for my rank. Let me know how you would rank these sims in the comments below. I especially feel like putting Caleb at the who tier is quite controversial. I can assume that most people would want to put him higher. Um, again, I'm open to being proven wrong when I finally get around to buying the vampire pack. If you're interested in seeing some more LGBT videos, I strongly recommend checking out my transgender regs to riches challenge and if you subscribe i will see you in the next video